A wide range of emotions and reactions around the world over the news of Fidel Castro's death. Many Cuban exiles celebrating in the streets of Miami, but in the country that Castro led for several decades, people are showing a much more measured response, and some diplomats are taking the same approach. Steve Harrigan joins us by phone from Havana, Cuba, with the latest. Steve? Arthel, a real sense of uncertainty on the ground in Havana. People uncertain just how to react. Keep in mind this is a country where the government enforces a great deal of control over protests and even people's emotions. What we're going to see here now is a very controlled funeral procession. It all begins Monday morning when we're going to see public mourning in Havana. People will file by a picture of Fidel Castro. For most, the only leader they've ever known here, the only person in control for the past 50 years. That will go on Monday and Tuesday here in Havana, and then the ashes of Fidel Castro, he was cremated on Saturday, will be carried along a procession. It's going to trace the reverse route of the route he came to power in all the way back in 1959. It will go all the way back to Santiago for three days. Of course, in power now is Fidel Castro's brother, 85-year-old Raul Castro. So with Fidel leaving the scene and an 85-year-old in charge, the real question is what's next? We really could see a generational change in Cuban leadership over the next few years. The mood here is really strange. People, many of them uncertain how to feel, especially for many of the elderly Cubans I've spoken with. He's really been the only figure they've ever known in charge, so it is jarring. Um, celebrations, any uh, parties or anything are all completely shut down here in Cuba. One grandfather even told me a birthday party for his one-year-old had to be canceled. That's really a sign of just how much the state is controlling things here. Of course, the big question now is what will the relations be between Cuba and the U.S.? Of course, President Obama reopened those relations after a 50-year uh, layoff, reopened the U.S. Embassy here, beginning that process two years ago. Uh, to what extent will that continue under President-elect Trump, who's already made known his feelings that he wants to reverse some of the concessions that the U.S. has given to Cuba? The other big question here, where's the Cuban economy going to go? Really, uh, it can't get much worse here for many people who earn just about $20 a month. They've lost the Soviet Union as a backer. They've lost Venezuela as a backer. Continuing opening up may be the only way for this communist regime to stay in power. Arthel and Eric, back to you. Okay, Steve Harrigan, thank you very much. Live there in Havana, Cuba.